Hi, I'm Judy Tayabji. Today we're taking on a very difficult subject. We're talking about the issue of pedophiles. We've heard a lot of news stories recently about child pornography and pedophiles who have been alleged to have performed sexual acts on children, and we will now wait to see what happens in the system. It comes under the issue of children. We've done Beyond Gove. We're going to look at daycare, child poverty, and family law over the coming weeks. But today, let's take a look at some of the background to the issue of pedophiles in British Columbia. Unfortunately, it's not good news. February 20th, a former Oak Bay hockey coach is charged with sex offenses. He allegedly assaulted some of his players in the mid-80s. The following week, a porno film with a two- and a four-year-old girl being sexually assaulted surfaces in Agassiz. It's devastating to, uh, to see these pictures, and um, it's the most disturbing thing that I've seen in my 26 years of police service. Just when we think child sex stories can't get more horrific, a 22-year-old Victoria man is charged with fondling his 16-month-old daughter. I think sexual or child sexual molestation has always been a real problem, but it's just become a topical one lately. Darren Lauer is a parent and a police officer. His passion is teaching personal safety. Predators will either try to trick, bribe, or sometimes physically threaten the child not to tell. Let's to keep this our little secret. Because if you do tell, something bad is going to happen to your mom or dad or maybe to you. Get that f***ing camera out of here. Until recently, even police forces kept quiet about child yeah, sexual assaults. Go. But Saanich officers tried yeah. a new approach when John Paul Club was released from prison in 1995. They warned residents Club was a convicted child molester. We feel that uh, people have uh, the right to know uh, when this situation exists and to take normal, not unreasonable, but normal precautions with respect to their children. The poster campaigns are effective, but kids' safety should begin in the home. Lauer suggests start early and be honest. Parts, and I think parents need to tell their children the real names of their private parts and to let them know that nobody's allowed to touch them except for two people. The first is doctors, but only when mom and dad are in the room. And second, mom and dad, only when the child is bathing and when the child feels comfortable with that. And if you think that your kids will never be victims of child sexual assault, think again. Young girls, uh, they're one in three risk of uh, becoming victimized of sexual molestation before the age of 18. Boys is about one to ten. Uh, we now know that more than 85 percent of the offenders of sexual abuse of our children are somebody the child and parent knows, loves, and trusts. So how do we protect our children and how do we know who to trust? And what about some recent developments? We'll be back to take your calls and we're going to talk to two experts. Tayabshi is brought to you in part by CFAX 1070, Victoria's news authority. The Tetley tea folk keep making sure they're as fit as they can be to keep making Tetley Canada's favorite cup of tea. It's up to God to count perforations. Better not miss even one. It's taste exercises and obstacle races. And knowing around tea bag from 40 paces. So if you ever stop and wonder why Tetley tea is best, it's because when it comes to taste, Tetley tea folk never rest. If you're looking for the best value in a family sedan, we've got your winning combination, the 97 Chrysler Intrepid, the only family sedan with cap forward design, a proud Canadian heritage, a long list of standard features, and a proven award winner. That combination has resulted in over half a million intrepid sold. And at this great price, they'll be selling faster than ever. Hurry, this winning combination is only at your local BC Chrysler dealer. Here's your Pop-Tart. Another one. See after baseball practice. Got the toaster strudel? Oh, of course. So when is your mom going to find out about toaster strudel? Soon, I hope. Pillsbury toaster strudel is like a Pop-Tart, but tastes better. With layers of flaky pastry, juicy filling, and do-it-yourself icing. So what do you do with the Pop-Tarts? Pillsbury toaster strudel, now available in cream cheese and fruit combinations. The ability to realize your vision of the future depends on the answer to this question. What's your future worth? Team up with Bob Hanley and Associates at TD Evergreen to plan your asset allocation strategy with a wealth management service unparalleled in the region. Call Bob for an appointment. The sooner, the better. 
because in today's low interest rate environment, it's going to take more than savings to achieve your financial goals. It's going to take wise advice. Bob Hanley, serving the island, and I'm O North. There are a few things more horrifying than child sexual abuse. And yet, unfortunately, it's a reality that we have to deal with in our communities. There have been a number of stories recently that have been quite shocking, including child pornography rings being exposed in B.C. We're going to talk a little bit about how we can protect our children. We have in studio with us both Madeline and Peggy, who have sort of different perspectives, but the same kind of issue. Thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you for having us. I wanted to start by talking about something that... Um, you know, sort of sets the tone. So let me just share with the viewers a couple of things about pedophile rings that exist. And then I want to ask you a couple questions on this. Um, there's, there's a quote from a molester that says, give me a kid who knows nothing about sex and you've given me my next victim. Um, then it talks about pedophile organizations such as the Rene Guillon Society, NAMBLA, which is a North American man-boy love association, and PAN, the Pedophile Alert Network, network which actually have regular newsletters um, that include seduction techniques and advice on avoiding detection and prosecution. Uh, one section called Lure of the Month said soap crayons were praised for their effectiveness. Children undress themselves. Then NAMBLA's Entrapment of the Month column has alerted members to covert government child pornography sting operations. In one newsletter alone, NAMBLA correctly identified 10 sting operations in five different states. Now, these are international organizations. Obviously, there are people on the inside of the police, at least in the sting operation and possibly other areas. Um, I want to start with you, Peggy. Why aren't we better at figuring out who's a pedophile? Why aren't we better at weeding them out? Well, we resort to looking at convicted pedophiles is one of the problems. And um, it's very, very hard in child sexual abuse cases to convict a pedophile. We estimate that only about 20% of cases are their uh, charges late. You're kidding. So 80%, what, they get arrested and then released? No, in 80% of the cases, children may be too young to testify. They're not, they don't make good witnesses. Or it may be a child with disabilities who cannot testify or don't have um, the kind of speech which um, would stand up in court. So they're not articulate enough? Not articulate enough or in some cases with children with disabilities they haven't been taught as well um, their sexual information so it may not be till much later that they can even put it what happened to them in some sort of context okay. so they are at more risk okay madeline um there's been today we had a resolution passed at the bc teachers federation convention about homosexuality is there some confusion sometimes i noticed that when it came to the adoption act and other things people tend to roll roll that over homosexuality mm -hmm. therefore a child predator yes there's a great confusion in that uh, area and a homosexual person is not a pedophile. A pedophile is a uh, person who's attracted to prepubescent children. A person who's homo, uh, choosing to uh, have a homosexual relationship is looking to an adult uh, of the same sex. So it's two totally different things. Totally different things. Okay, so you can have a heterosexual pedophile. Yes, in fact, research shows that about 92% of the cases are heterosexual males. Okay. How can we protect our children? We'll start with you, Peggy. How, what, how on earth can you protect your children when these are people in positions of trust? Well, I think we have to look at protection in three levels. One is community, one is family, parents, and the, the last one is the ch children and um, teaching them prevention skills. In terms of community, we have to get better at, at protecting children from pedophiles as a community in initiative, a community intervention. Parents have got to have more information as to how to screen caregivers, how to screen people who have access to their children. And then our last line of defense really is the child themselves. Children, empowering the children. Empowering children, teaching them the skills not to be chosen as a victim, and if they are, what to do. Okay, we're going to go to the phones and then, Madeline, I have some questions for you do, through the show. But we have online from uh, Vancouver, Sandra Cunningham, actually from the Tri-City area. Now, Sandra, the, uh, the, the brochure, the, the Tri-City newsletter about pedophiles, that's something that you're working with. Why don't you tell us just briefly what that's about? Okay, basically what we do here in the Tri-City is we spend a lot of time uh, with preventative efforts to protect our children from pedophiles. And I publish a magazine here that profiles repeat child sex offenders that have relocated or located themselves into the Tri-City area. So what we do is we have a section in our magazine called the Pedophile Alert, 
and we provide for the parents in the community uh, up-to-date photo of the offender, location of where he's living, background on his crime, any physical description, things such as that, to help the parents and the daycare providers in the community protect the children from any further harm from these offenders. And do you think that helps? I think it's a wonderful program. It's, it's a grassroots program. It took quite a bit of time for us to get it organized, but it has been very, very successful, and we're quite pleased with the response that we've gotten from the community. Okay. Do you have any support from the government? Uh, unfortunately, no. I don't have a lot of support from the government. Uh, it seems that with the Privacy Act that is in place now, uh, we have to protect the rights of the offender. Okay. And that's very unfortunate. When you w walk on the side of caution with regards to these types of crimes, we should be walking on the side of caution for the children rather than on the side of caution for the, the perpetrator. Okay, Sandra, and can people get hold of you through the phone book? Sure can. Okay, and you're listed under? Uh, Tri-City Child Care Guide. Uh, okay. One little thing I just wanted to mention, if I could just take a second. One of the precautions that we try and teach the parents here is we must spend more time shopping for our child care than we do for our family, second family car. So when you're going out and looking for child uh, care for your children, one of the things that we uh, specify is that when you're looking for uh, information regarding uh, children that are in the child care or children who have been in the child care, we find that the best recommendations you can get are from the parents whose children are no longer in that child care facility. You can find out what the problem was with the parents, why the children are no longer entrusted to that child care facility, and it's a really good way. Also, $29 will get you a criminal record check if you're doing a private home wow. child care. Uh, you can uh, insist from the child care provider, any them or any person who is living in the home okay. or has access to the home to submit to a criminal record check. If they refuse to do that, then move on and go and find a, a child care facility that will. Okay. Thanks very much, Sandra. Um, now, I want to, uh, Madeline, you probably had a comment on that. I know we, we've got the lines are jammed and we should get to the calls, but uh, on that, is that what you'd recommend as well, that you check people Yes, out? her points were excellent, and uh, it's true. We need to spend more time investigating who are taking care of our children. Right, and, yeah. and uh, $29 is a small price to pay. Very much. Okay, let's talk to Ron now in Victoria. Hi, Ron. Oh, hi, Judy. Uh, I... I have a I have a question for all of you. Okay. Uh, Judy, for yourself, I would like to find out personally. You have uh, you have uh, you know been through the the process of uh, you know going through government and everything else. Mm -hmm. And the comment is that I have is why is it all the taxpayers have to pay for these people for protective custody? You know. Why not just throw them into population mm -hmm. and let things deal with the way they are? Yeah. Uh, they have taken away uh, young children, uh, innocent children yeah. constantly, and I mean, to me, that is sick. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, I know what he's referring to, obviously, is Clifford Olson. I, I can't disagree with you, Ron. As far as I'm concerned, as long as we have people living on the street... Uh, who, we don't have the resources to meet people who are law-abiding. I don't know why we're providing protective custody to pedophiles in our prisons. You guys must hear quite a bit about that. Mm. Uh, people feel a lot of anger. Tremendous mm. anger, rage. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really out of your purview, though, I guess. But do you have to deal with some of the parents on this issue. Yes, I've actually worked with the parents of one of his victims. And the pain that goes on forever is something that they have to learn to live with. Okay. Oh, we have to, let's go to uh, Kim now in Burnaby. Hi, Kim. Hi. Um, I have a quick question. My daughter is um, going to be five in May, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to educate her properly on strangers in the sense where I don't want to scare her from people, but I don't want her to be too friendly. Um, a good example was when I went clothes shopping with her, and she'd realize that the sales clerk is being nice or whatever, and she'd run up and she'd hug their legs oh. or she'd play with them. and. You know, it actually makes the adults feel uncomfortable, and I'm trying to tell her that, you know, we don't do that, but I don't think she's really grasping the concept. And okay. I've gone to the library to find books to educate her, but I, nothing's really working. Okay. Uh, let's go to you, Peggy. I mean, what do you do? You don't want your kids to lose that innocence of youth. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a wonderful story that they'd hug someone they don't know, but... I think that you need to teach children about um, personal integrity and personal boundaries, and that just like they may not want a hug from a total stranger, that maybe strangers don't want hugs from them either, and to ask first. Oh, I see. And, and to begin to teach them that, and that you're also giving the message that they can control their own space as well. 
And I don't think that um, five is too young to begin to teach that. But what about also saying, uh, don't do that when mommy or daddy isn't there or grandma or grandpa or whatever. I mean, if there's, some, if there's a guardian there, that person should also be part of that child's choice too, shouldn't they? Yes, and, and I, think that it, I think that children should have the choice to hug or not to hug all the time. And another way to protect your children is what if scenarios. Um, so what if a stranger did this? But please also remember the what ifs of family members or people who are close to the children right. and friends of the family because in over 90% of the, of the cases, the sexual predator is going to be someone that they a know. child knows. Okay, we're going to try and very quickly, John and Campbell River, um, do you have a comment or question? Hello? Hi, yes, that's you. We have very little time before break though. Yes, um, I'd just like to say that um, I used to be a child welfare worker in another province, and we were well aware of the pedophiles that existed in the, in the town, and we were powerless to do anything about it. And it was it was one of the reasons why why it was an intolerable situation. We do we do a terrible job of protecting the most innocent children, uh, the innocent in our in our population. These people are predators. They are they are manipulative. They are violent. And we, as a society, are to blame. Okay. It, we, we, you know, we, we put a lot of lip service into a lot of other things. You know, uh, this is sacred and that's sacred. What is more sacred than a child's life? Right. And, and once the damage is done, they, these poor children are, end up perpetuating the same sort of behavior as these predators. I, was, I saw a man on TV. It was absolutely disgusting. He was actually advocating this lifestyle and being proud of it. Yeah, the, these people, the media, mm -hmm. should not give these people the, the, the Space in TV. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Um, well, it's a pretty powerful comment to uh, go to a break on. I think he's right. Uh, you know, we talked about that. They're child sexual predators. We have to be aware of it. Come back with uh, with your comments and your calls. Uh, we're talking about pedophiles right after a break. Tayabshi is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, Victoria and Duncan. Okay, I know you're a department store. Now show me what makes you different. Show me! Seen all these brands together anywhere else? You have a point. Seen a store that has all this all under one roof? You have another point. What about a store that services everything they sell? That makes a difference. Show me. And actually lets you earn Sears Club points towards almost anything in the store. I think I need a closer look. In person. Watch out, there's something funny going on. It's new Tickle Me Elmo. Just tickle Elmo, and he really talks. That tickles. And laughs. Tickle him again, and hold on, because his whole body shakes with laughter. Oh, boy. So be on the lookout. He's coming to a funny bone near you. Tickle Me Elmo, the newest huggable member of the Tyco Sesame Street family. Each sold separately. Gonna take a sentimental journey Gonna set my heart at ease Gonna make a sentimental journey To renew old memories All aboard Got my bag, got my reservation CDI College opened opportunities I never imagined possible. They gave me the training I needed for success in the current technology job market. And they offered me the right options to suit my needs and schedule. People at CDI really care. From my first phone call to the job search program, they were with me all the way. Do you have what it takes? Serious technology training for serious jobs starts soon. Call CDI College of Business and Technology and prepare yourself for a new career. We're talking about a difficult issue today. We're talking about pedophiles, and uh, we're trying to figure out how we can teach our children and protect them from some of the people who are out there who are sexual predators. And the system is something to enrage us over. Um, no, line eight, we're talking to Stephen now in Vancouver. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Judy. Um, I like your show. Uh, what I'm calling about is these people, it's, there's been studies done that have proven that these people are not treatable. Right. They, that they have a very high recidivist rate, and they, and that they usually repeat offend when they are when they are taken um, 
out of jail and put back in into society. Why are, forget about telling our children that they should act this way and that way and all this sort of thing. Why aren't we blocking these people up and keeping them away from from uh, uh, from our children? Okay, and that's, that's all I have to say. Good comment. Uh, study after study has said that you can't rehabilitate some pedophiles. I mean, is that true? Is that what you find out? Uh, we'll start with you, Peggy, maybe? Some of you can. Uh, the studies actually say about two-thirds will go on to repeat um, after their first offense. So shouldn't uh, we conviction. err on the side of the children and just lock them up? Well, I, I think that we need to do something in terms of either better treatment or if that if they haven't shown really signs of, of being rehabilitated, then why are they just let out without any sort of restrictions is also another question. Madeline, you're a registered psychologist. I mean, are there times when you just want to say, okay, forget it. We're not going to work with people like this anymore. Referring to, well, to the, the abusers people, yeah. or the victims? Yeah, no, the abusers. No, you have to yeah. keep working with the victims. Well, but. being in private practice, I'm very fortunate that the people who come to see me, Judy, are very motivated and are feeling remorse and uh, very clear in, in their commitment to working in therapy. Right. This is not the standard population. And oh, uh, Peggy's right that uh, about uh, two-thirds are um, very difficult to treat and the recidive rate is very, very high. And I think we need to have the Justice Minister on and ask him these kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. And we have Lila in Esquimalt. Hi, Lila. Hi. Um, I, was, I was a young teenager when Clifford Olson started his terrorism and I'm now a single mother of three children of my own, as you can hear in the background. Right. Um, I'm sick. I am terrified of society now. How can we stand for this as people? Repeat offenders. I understand everyone has the right to be rehabilitated, but for repeat offenders, how can we put them away in jail? How can we spend thousands upon thousands of dollars every year to keep these, these people, these sick people alive? Yeah. A single bullet is much cheaper. Yeah. Okay. Well... I mean, either of you want to comment on that? I mean, you must hear that from so many people. Mm -hmm. I, I know I hear it myself, and, uh, you know, it's hard to dis... You can't disagree with that. But there's a lot of anger and rage, and I think that's very, very understandable. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to try line two here. Hi, line two. I don't have your name, but go ahead. My name's Mike. Hi, Mike. Um, hi. Um, I was just phoning. I, again, I love your show. Oh, thanks. Um, I was phoning to... Uh, speak about it, uh, an issue about these guys in jail. Right. Um, I was just released from uh, Wilkinson Road on a uh, different type of offense. It wasn't a sexual offense. Right. But um, the way that these pedophiles and people who commit these crimes are treated in there is actually disgusting. Um, they're treated a lot better than anybody else in the, in the whole jail. Uh, they have plenty of room to walk around. They have plenty of help. Uh, there's, they're just cared for. It's like they're the babies of the place. Right. I think that that's probably the biggest problem is, uh, is our system. Okay. Because um, I don't understand why these people are treated so well. Okay, I'll tell you what, Mike. It sounds like everybody's coming back to the same theme. And uh, what we'll do is uh, I'll talk to the producer after the show. Maybe we can do something on justice reform, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, about the children um, teaching them. Now we have Roger online with us. Hi, Roger. Are you there? And that's the time delay. Okay, line four. Hi, line four. Hi. Hi, I don't have your name, but go ahead. Um, hi, my name's Jackie. Um, three times since, since um, I guess since I was three, I've been um, molested. And um, my mother has been too, so like I guess we're in the high odd area. But my point is that um, I'm a mother now, and if anyone comes up to my son, I, I almost cringe, and I've taken um, the attitude that if I really don't feel comfortable with what's going on, I tell the person, I don't know you, don't take it personally, but I don't want you touching, I don't want you coming near my son. That's and um, I, think, I think parents owe that to themselves, because quite often I've talked to people where they, they'll, you know, someone's come up to their child and, you know, grab them or given them something, and they go home and they kick themselves for not saying something, but they have felt very uncomfortable about it. And right. I, think, I think parents should, should take a stand, and I think people will start to realize that they can't just, okay. you know, come up to children. Thanks, Jackie. Mm -hmm. um, now, Madeline and Peggy, in that case, she's talking about her mother was abused, she was abused, now she feels that she's sensitive to her child. That's probably a good thing for her child. Well, it can be. It depends on how much fear she's eliciting as opposed to having 
uh, assertive personal boundaries that feel comfortable. And this isn't a judgment of her. I don't know how much work she's done on the pain that she went through. Right. And uh, I think as parents, we're responsible, as all adults, for role modeling good personal boundaries right. for our children and for other youth. Okay. And, and Peggy, in that case, when you, when, if you want to leave people, I mean, everybody out there is in a rage right now. I can, you can mm -hmm. feel it in the phone mm -hmm. calls, um, and, and for good reason. But let's leave them with a positive thing. How do we get to the point, if you can say something to your children, so that they're not afraid if they tell us that they'll be punished by someone else? I think that it has to start before the abuse. You have to have the kind of relationship with your child that the child will feel comfortable to come and tell you about other things in their lives that they're not comfortable with. I think the key there is to listen to our children right. and that if um, they're having a real problem with a caregiver or a care situation that you listen to what it is and you do something about it. Okay. And in that case, too, we should never be afraid of... You mentioned just briefly, when, pe when you're talking about a child's private parts and their genitals, we shouldn't be nicknaming them. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. They need to have the correct names. They need to know that that belongs to them. Okay. That they have the right to say no. Okay. Obviously, this is a huge subject. We'll have to come back to it. Um, I just want to uh, end this segment by letting people know that if you want to catch the real-time audio of this, you can find us on the website. There's two weeks that are archived at www.checksix.com. Also, you can email us at tayabji at wic.ca. We'd be happy to hear from you. And you can mail us at 780 Kings Road. We, I read everything. Uh, the producer and the associate producer read everything. And we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And now, quick break. It's been two weeks. What do you mean? I mean every day for two weeks. Every day? Every day. It's good. It's very good. Two weeks, huh? Oh, yeah. What does your wife think? She thinks it's great. You should try it. Oh, I'm gonna try it. Good. They're talking about Kellogg's All Bran. It's very high in fiber. Make it part of your complete breakfast for two weeks and see how you feel about it. How do you feel about it? Good. You feel good. I knew that I would. Kellogg's All Bran. Try it for two weeks. Love it forever. Okay. When it comes to big things, we're looking for names we can trust. At Sears, we have all the brand names you want, all under one roof. And here's something else you'll want. Don't pay for one full year on all furniture, major appliances, and home electronics when you use your Sears card. Plus, earn valuable points towards almost anything in the store. Great. Now what about a big guarantee? At Sears, if there's ever a problem, there is no problem. We service everything we sell. Sears? Sears. Look, I invented something amazing. 2,000 flushes, blue plus bleach. Powerful blue detergent plus stain-fighting chlorine bleach. Two cleans in one for up to four months. 2,000 flushes, blue plus bleach. Two cleans in one. Ricky, there's two things you need to remember when you're out here in the racetrack. First, you need to use this new formula Quaker State motor oil. Second, you need to stay right behind me. New formula Quaker State has over nine state-of-the-art additives for a clean-running engine. We're at Dave Wheaton, Pontiac Buick, talking to more real people. Which people know about used vehicles at Dave Wheaton? We have a 60-point inspection on all used vehicles. We have a 30-day uh, powertrain, and we have 15% off parts and labor. <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far to say I sold more cars than anybody else, but uh, through the years, uh, after being here for 14 years and being in the car business for 25 years, uh, you do get to meet a lot of people. Dave Wheaton, Pontiac Buick. Real people, real close by. Come see for yourself. Aquaculture or fish farming has been controversial for years. Now the provincial government is coming out with a review, and they're supposed to tell us whether it's environmentally sensitive or not. The debate is pretty hot, and we'll be talking about it tomorrow. Unfortunately, sexual predators are everywhere. If you look on the internet, you can find how to be a good sexual predator. It's sickening. Child pornography that we've seen and picked up in the Fraser Valley is enough to turn your stomach. And all of you who called in expressing rage about the system, I agree with you. I can't understand why we have money for special security on repeat child offenders, but there's no money for the poor children in this country. It's time we reassessed our priorities, but we have to start as members of a community taking care of our own and watchdogging people who come across as a little bit strange. I'm Judy Tayabji, and that's my opinion.